Then the Urban Decay Naked One palette is on the bottom, and I drew us a little dividing line with my lip liner to make it really easy for us to differentiate between the two. <laughs> Welcome back. So I have a review for y'all today on the CoverGirl True Naked palettes. So I have the Goldens, I have the Nudes, and then also the Roses. So I've been trying these out for a while now, so I definitely have some thoughts on them. Um, we're going to go over what I normally do in my review videos. So we'll talk about the pricing, we'll look at the packaging, um, we'll look at some swatches. I will do some comparison swatches between these and the Naked palettes because clearly they're trying to do some duping here. So we'll look at some comparison swatches there talk about the formula, and then I'll just give you my overall thoughts and opinions and review on these palettes. So let's jump into it. So the first two, the Goldens and the Nudes, I bought these at Walgreens for $11.99 each. And then the third one, the Roses, I got sent for free from Influencer to review. I've mentioned Influencer on my channel before and done some like Vox Box unboxings and review videos. Basically, Influencer is just a program that you can, what I did is I downloaded the app and then you connect it to your social media accounts and then you can take different quizzes and then based off your answers and I guess like I don't know like your influence or whatever they call it then they choose different people to send different products to to review so that's where I got this but yeah I think $11.99 is a fairly decent price I mean I wish it was a little cheaper like I would love if they were like $7.99 or $8.99 but I mean it's not a horrible price as far as the packaging goes I think it's functional I think it's very like typical drugstore it's the see-through plasticky look to it um I wouldn't buy it for the packaging necessarily, but I think it's functional and fine. I do think it's funny that they say shades like a leading $50 eyeshadow palette. Like they're like putting a spotlight on these things that they are definitely trying to do some duping here. But I don't know that they needed to do that. I think that most of us or a lot of us would already know that anyway. So I don't know that they needed to blatantly say that, but it's on there. But I, you know, it's a little sticker, so you can just pull it off. I think the packaging is functional and fine, but not necessarily like amazingly cute. And I'm quickly just running through each of the palettes. So first off is the Goldens. This is definitely supposed to be a dupe for the Naked One palette. This is more of your like warm toned neutral palette. It has a lot of like kind of golden sort of shades and bronzes. It actually has a couple of kind of like army green sort of colors. So, which isn't necessarily like the Naked One palette. There's not really, I mean, other than well, even Dark Horse really isn't like a greenish color. It's just kind of like a cool tone, chocolatey brown. So that's kind of interesting, but it's more of that warm toned neutral palette. Then the Nudes is kind of your cooler toned neutral palette. Definitely a dupe for the Naked 2, or that's what they're going for. Um, yeah, just kind of like taupey colors, pinky shades, um, more cooler toned burgundy sort of brown shades really pretty as well and then the roses is way more on the pink side so it's supposed to be similar to the naked three palette and that's what i'm wearing on my eyes today i have the roses on and it's really pretty just telling you outright this one is my favorite of the three um it's just got really pretty pinky shades purpley shades, burgundy shades. So it's kind of that like sweet girly bridal sort of palette. Okay, so here are some swatches. So the golden palette is on the top and then the Urban Decay Naked One palette is on the bottom. And I drew us a little dividing line with my lip liner to make it really easy for us to differentiate between the two. <laughs> Okay, so the Golden Palette has eight shadows in it, the Naked One. All the Naked Palettes have 12 shadows in them, so you're not going to get like the exact same shadows, obviously, because you have fewer shadows in the CoverGirl one, but there are some comparable shades for sure, so you can absolutely get a very similar eye look using this palette, and it's going to look a lot like a look that you could get with a Naked One palette. So in that sense, I would say, yes, it is a dupe, but it's not, you know, shadow for shadow. You're going to have the exact same things in both palettes. Also a little side note, um, the CoverGirl palettes, they actually name the shadows, which I think is really a cute added detail. You don't really see that in the drugstore, like hardly ever. So I love that they did that, but yeah, you can see they're all really pigmented. They swatch really nicely, but hang tight because I'm going to talk more about the formula of them in just a second. And then here is the nudes on top in comparison to the Naked 2 on the bottom. So you can see they definitely went for more of the like cooler side of the Naked 2 because overall the Naked 2 is a cool tone palette, but it does have some kind of like golden coppery shades included in there too. So they didn't really choose to go for any of those. They went for more of the like pinky shades, taupey shades, 
chocolatey brown sort of colors, which I really do like. The Naked 2 has always been a go-to for me if I want like a really classic eye look to go with a red lip or something. So that's always been a go-to. So now I think the nude is definitely going to be one of my like go-to's for a drugstore, sort of a classic eye look to go with a drugstore red lip. And then lastly, here is the Roses palette in comparison to the Naked 3. So I just really love this one. This one's definitely my favorite. Um, I just think that they picked some of the most beautiful shadows in the Naked 3 to dupe in the Roses palette. It's just that like sweet, girly, bridal, feminine sort of a palette. They all swatch really nicely. I'll go over this in a second, but I definitely think this one performs the best of the three. So it's just easier to work with and it really makes some beautiful eye looks. I love this one. So as far as the texture goes on these shadows, they are really powdery, like super duper powdery. So when you're working with them, you're probably gonna get a lot of kick up in the pans. Your palette's probably gonna get a little bit messy looking. Um, I even noticed when I'm swatching them that they kind of, I don't know if you can see it there, but they kind of like ball up a little bit and kind of stick to themselves. So, I would say texture, not so great. They're just really powdery. Um, and that does kind of affect the longevity that I found. But really, what I found is it all depends on how I prep my eyes before using these shadows. Like, most days I use a primer, and then I use MAC Paint Julie Paint Pot, and then I maybe use like a color tattoo or some kind of a sticky base. I do that almost every single day with my eyeshadows. So the days that I was kind of lazy and would just apply like MAC Paint Julie Paint Pot, that was not working. I was noticing that these were really fading throughout the day really quickly. But the days that I went through my different steps and really prepped my eyes well, I noticed that they last really well throughout the day. So I think it really just depends on kind of how you prep before these shadows. Um, and I also did notice that the roses seems to perform a little bit better than the other ones. Like, it's still super duper powdery, like it still gets really messy in the pan. But I don't know, I feel like they just kind of work together really well and I've liked the eye looks that I've created with this one the best, probably because I like the colors the best, but also they just seem to build on themselves a little bit easier, maybe a little bit more pigmented. The mattes seem a little bit better in this one. So this is definitely my favorite of the three, but I just find that it performs a little bit better than the other two. So I don't know, not the best texture. They do fade if you don't prep your eyes, but if you prep really well, I've noticed that they last really well, and I think they make really pretty eye looks. So my overall review on these palettes is that I do like them. I think they're a great option in the drugstore. I still like my L'Oreal La Palette Nude 1 and Nude 2 better than these. I think that, especially the mattes and satins in those palettes, they just blend really nicely and they're easy to work with. So those are still my favorites um, comparing the two. I like those better. But I do think that these are a nice option in the drugstore. I think they can really make some nice eye looks. You just may have to take a little bit extra time to prep your eyes to help with kind of like longevity and texture issues with them. All right guys, so that's my overall review on the CoverGirl True Naked palettes. So I hope that you really enjoyed this video and I hope it was helpful for you. Please give it a thumbs up if it was and let me know down below what you are thinking about these palettes, if you've tried them out, which ones are your favorites or which one is your favorite. Let me know some looks that you're creating with them. I just love hearing your thoughts and opinions. Ask me any questions that you have, I'm happy to answer those. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!